It's Champion Sing Light. Welcoming you on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Ajisha. A lot of matches coming up tonight over there in Europe. Matches will be on, and a lot of people will actually love you. Have a Champions League. We'll be hoping to see their teams winning. We'll be looking at that on the show. But before then, let's start from the home scene. Well, why Nigerians are celebrating a particular athlete who has really done well for us, a star girl, as they call her. Toby Loba Mushan right now uh, he's really having issue with another set of uh, <laughs> organization AIU Athletic Integrity Unit right now seriously trying to see what they can do to make sure she faces uh, uh, issues concerning her not uh, being uh, uh, available rather for the test that was actually sent to her three times now Athletic Integrity Unit dragged Toby Mushan to court of arbitration for sport looking at the fact that uh, earlier on before the Budapest race she was cleared of it but now the AIU are saying no we'll continue to see how we can get this lady pinned down now you are not happy with this particular development how come well that question will be answered by our usual suspect on the show that's this uh on our feet it's good to have you yeah um good morning Adine. Mm. it's my pleasure and thanks for having me yeah, let them try and continue mm. trying. They've tried before the field, and this time around they're going to fail again. And what they try to do is to play psychology on her to make sure that she got distracted for the last competition, which she performed woefully. That happens to be one of our bad results for the past few years. And you look at what happened, like two weeks after that, 12.33, she came first also. It was after that, on the 15th of September, that they have to rethink again that, oh, this emotion lady that we are trying to pull down is like, they don't know the Nigerian spirit. Hmm. We have this this spirit that is never right. give up. We don't give up. We believe in a just cause. We're going to go for it, and that is what she's doing. And I'm very very certain that they will still find nothing against her. What they are trying to achieve, I'm sure they won't achieve it. Probably they are trying to have their build up against the Olympic hmm. coming up next year to find a way to uh, to suspend her so that she cannot have the heli preparation. We're in September already. The Paris 2014 is just. Stone 2024. Yes, I mean, sorry, 2024. It's just Stone Throw, which a lot of athletes they are preparing now, and that is something that she also she's preparing to go there to beat her best record of 12.12.12 or whatever wind as they call it. So I see this as a gym. So this is the time that we all need to come around to be a mission. She has a very good um, record in terms of the attitude and character. Off and on the pitch, she has condoned herself the very best way. So I don't see why these are coming up. The issue was brought up about um, a month or thereabout. They cleared her. Nothing happened. Two days. Two days, hmm. Two days to the event. That was when they released that, you know, am I will be okay, am I going to participate? Am I not going to participate? What is going to happen? The preparation, you know, there's no how you will do it. You are going to be psychologically, there. psychologically you they will be got there. her. And that they got her, but she came up again. Now they are bring they are going to fail again. Let them plan, you know, to be sincere with you. The uh, the so-called uh, developed country, the European people, they say have this mindset. How can I'm an African? How can an African? Take over the take world. Over the world in 100 meters or those. She has a world record, the best record, the personal Diamond record. They are, is she the only one? So they want to find everything possible. If she's not taking, if she's taking aku or a bar, they can tell <laughs> that they find a substance inside that bar. That is so. That is not what we are looking at this time, right? We are looking at we should give everybody the opportunity to display their talent without having this slavery or colonial. Uh, athletics is not meant for only the U.S. or Jamaica. It's not meant for them also. We are better than them, even more because we don't really put our house in order. Do they think we don't have someone that can run eight, eight, eight points within, uh, within 100 meters? Hmm. 100 meters, we have people in this country that if you give them the proper training, as in proper training, they can get to 8.5 to 9 seconds within 100 meters. And we like someone, that. someone was saying, which I bumped onto online by actually mentioning that, okay, when Toby that he did not expect to be able to actually make the call to the final because psychologically she was down. But she was still able to qualify for the final of that Budapest competition. That's uh, World Athletics. And she came fifth, not even eight. Yes. She was still able to drop three other people. That was a strong mentality. After that, just not even up to a month, she bounced back. The world champion of that race ran in this race. Yes. She came third. third. 
the second Kamacho queen, world champion also, she okay, beat her second. to it. And it, it was like, oh, wow, how come this lady? And if we look at that particular race very well, from the beginning to the end, it wasn't as if she picked up at the middle. From the beginning to, to the, the end, end, she was at the front, proving to the whole world that I can do this. Now, after that, yeah, you came, okay, we are filing this issue, this, this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, what do they have against Toby? Okay, what they have against Toby is very simple. I'm sure if to Toby, if he has lost out during that race, we, we won't exactly. have this issue. Mm. If, if, if he didn't come first. If he, didn't, if he had lost out, if he didn't come first, second or third, we won't have this issue. So their issue is, oh, okay, this is a lady that during the Budapest competition, World Athletic uh, Championship, she came fifth, despite everything that we did to her. Then about, so two, she... about two or three weeks again, <laughs> she was able to get herself together and she came first. And those people that defeated her, in the last competition, that was, the one that was held in Budapest, she what? She raised them out. So what happened? Let, like I said earlier, it is a gimmick. Take it or leave it. It's a ploy to be sure that they're destabilizing her, pulling her down emotionally. But we in this country at times, when you try to pull us down, that's how you see the best in house. So they're going to see the best in that motion. She's going to come out on top of this allegation. She's going to come out on top of this allegation. But from the way it is right now, as we say here, the Nigerian know they carry last. This lady won't give up. In fact, a big one for the fact that she was able to bounce back, not develop a, a month after she came fifth at the World Athletics in Budapest. And now she came fourth in Eugene, Oregon there, blasting home, coasting home 12.33 seconds. In fact, uh, even the commentator uh, couldn't hold his, uh, his own because it was like, Toby Amishan mm. won it. Really, we have to celebrate our own. Really, she has really done well. Our star girl, Toby Amishan, we wish her all the best as she actually faces that particular issue. They are coming from AIU. Hopefully, the kind of arbitration, arbitration for sport will get her cleared from this particular issue there. Well, we just have to move away from that story. Let's start go back to football for Toby. We wish her well uh, come the, the other competitions. Now, let's talk about football. Some games were played yesterday. The likes of uh, Nottingham Forest uh, win, uh, actually drawing against Burnley. It was a good one for Odoi, the man that left Chelsea and he was able to score that goal to get them back. Uh, so that mentality of not giving up at all, talking about Nottingham Forest. I wouldn't you couldn't score, but at least he added some sparks to that team. For Salanitana against Torino, it was still in favor of Torino, who saw actually they went away and they were able to win it. Hellas Verona played goalless against Bologna and La Liga, Girona really roasted, uh, <laughs> did well against uh, another G team, Granada, 4 2. It's a, it's a fight between the G's. The G's. So the G's <laughs> fought, but and they couldn't remember that they are G's. The, the, the G with I has to defeat. The G with, with R. R, so it's, it's it's a very nice one. So I think the league is take, taking shape on in La Liga, Serie A, but also in Premier League. That's the most watched league in the world. You can't take the fun away from Premier League. And if you watch yesterday's match, yes, and I wouldn't he didn't score, but he made he provided the assist to to the goal that led to the goal also, and it was very unlucky yesterday not to have registered a goal. So I think it's a very good one. I'm very happy for Burnley team also. Um, I thought yesterday would be the first time they get that third, three points away from home or three points in the Premier League, but unfortunately they can't cope with the pressure, the fire, the fire play of Nottingham Forest. Because if you look at their attack, they have Origi there, they have Odyssey there, they have Aoni there. So those three players, take it or leave it. There's no how you have them on pitch and you will not be scared of what they can do. And we saw what that, what that led to before the end of the game. So I think it's a very good one for both the Nottingham Forest and for, um, Burnley. for the Burnley team also. That shows that, uh, in, uh, what's the name of? Uh, Company. Uh, he actually company. has a company. He said company, <laughs> he has a very good company. That means he learned a lot from Pep Guardiola and that shows that Guardiola it's a very good coach. How do you know a good coach? He's a good manager and he's a good leader. You look at the people that's come up under him. Look at Mikel Atete. In the uh, well, uh, well, uh, Arsenal. It's your team, so you don't need to even stammer before no, you mention No, I, I, I didn't want to mention Arsenal so that I won't bring them here. <laughs> okay, you can see what um, Ateta is doing currently with the Arsenal team. They are playing a very good, fantastic football. Then Burnley also, if you watch them before they got promoted, it's like they have the they have the youngest squad in Premier League right now. The average age of their of their players is between 18 to 22 years old. Mm. So that means they have what it takes to still continue with their possession, with their pacey style 
of football. So I think it's a very good one that we watched yesterday. A good one for those matches yesterday. You also give you a brief uh, uh, how the table is standing right now. Let's just uh, look at it briefly. Uh, looking at the EPL, La Liga, and also Serie A uh, there. Well, you look at it. Man City are costing home 15 points from all the matches they've played. They won all. And you look at Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal. Uh, well, for good, uh, at least Brighton are really fighting hard to see among <coughs> big boys there. Really, Brighton are really done well. Deserve it. Yeah, uh, they've done well for themselves, and this is how they started last season, and mm -hmm. this is how they started season before also. In fact, since they came to Premier League in 2017, they've been trying to make uh, a name for themselves. So I think they deserve to be where they are right now. It is not... Um, it is not a game of chance because if you see their style of play, their style of play is different from all other teams. They have two fantastic formations that they use. It's either they play the, the normal 4-3-2-1 or they play 3-4-4. Four, four. So that allows them to, to end the possession by playing short passes. Once you are in possession and you play short passes, you will force your opponent to come out and attack. And once the opponents come out to attack, they use their counter-attack. That's why they have the two flank that they are very, very, very pacey. You make a mistake. We saw what they did to Man Manchester United over the weekend. That's their style of play. So I think they deserve to be where they are right now. Last season, they finished sixth, the first in their history to make it to Europe. This season, if they continue this way, probably they'll be among the top four. Who knows? It is very possible that Brighton could make top four there. But I don't know, on a lighter note, Manchester United and Chelsea, what's the marriage like? <laughs> yeah, and I saw... 13-14. Um, yeah, I saw a particular post where a man you... They tied their... They tied their hands <laughs> together. They are shared. They are shared together. <laughs> they are together. And both teams, I think, they need to really discover themselves. And if care is not taken, they will continue the to way... Sink. The, they will continue the way they are now to the end of the season. It's very shameful to have a team like Chelsea or Manchester United after playing five games, you have only five points and six points respectively. Mm. Chelsea only is even very worse. You play five, you you play five matches, you score five goals, you have five points. And someone said, well, just like last season, they played at eight matches, they saw that eight goals. Probably the same thing might happen this time around because they are still having that issue in front of goal. They've not really they've not gotten that striker. To be honest with you, the future is there for the players. Most of them they are yet to blend or understand how Premier League is being played. Mm. But what they need now is to they have to set in on time. If not, if they continue like this till November, then they should just forget the top ten. Because oh. other teams, they they are really nobody is playing this time around. Look at other teams. Look at West Ham, for example, look at what they've done. Look at Nottingham Forest also. They also do what? They try as much as possible to spread their team. They have a wide range of players that can even come in from the bench and win the game for them. Look at Aston Villa, you can't put them away. Look at Fulham also. Mm -hmm. They have one of the best uh, defensive record last season. And look at Brighton where they had. Look at Liverpool, look at Man City, look at Tottenham. So Chelsea and Manchester United they need to wake they up. really need to wake up from their, from their sleep. Right now, they need to wake up there. A lot of has given them a clarion call because if you want to be among the best, you just have to wake up from your sleep right now. My United fans and Chelsea fans, you can come for him, not me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway let's just quickly look at La Liga, uh, where games were also played. We look at the fellow Real Madrid are there. Barcelona also trailing by two points behind. Girona, Atletico Bilbao, Valencia in that pecking order. A big one there. Bellingham seems to be getting a lot of goals. Five goals he has scored. You have solid Morata. I also, I look at a uh, uh, round of results there, a lot of matches, but from the way it is right now, despite the fact that uh, uh, their coach Ancelotti is not too happy, but they are grinding, they are grinding on. <laughs> yeah, they are, Real grinding, Madrid. they are grinding on, and if you look at the, the young star that they have, they are the future, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. The team that Man, uh, Real Madrid, they have currently now, in the next one or two years, they'll be like the Barcelona of 2008, 9, 10, and 11 that ruled the world. Because in the next two years, this player will be playing at ease. At ease in the sense that they will understand themselves far better, just like what Arsenal is doing right now. If you look at Arsenal last season and Arsenal this season, you see a lot of improvement. So if they continue like that in the next one or two years, mm. the likes of Real Madrid and Arsenal, they will be the team to beat in the world. Then for every and every league, you have a team that will just come and surprise you. Look at Girona, where they are currently right now. Mm. Look at their performance this time around. Look at the last four or five seasons. They either won't be between 16, 15, 14, try to survive to remain in the, in the La Liga. But this time around, they're like, no, we don't want to do that again. We want to be the surprise team. And if they continue like this, probably they'll see themselves in Europe. If we not be Champions League, if we not be Europa, it may be Conference League. Europe is Europe.
Of course, after all, Europe is Europe there. Let's quickly look at where the five for school dead. So it's all answer they are after the match that was played yesterday. From the way it is right now, the Nerazzurri is in Inter Milan are topping there with 12 points, followed by Juventus. AC Milan are trailing, standing tall there. Lecce, Napoli, uh, Frosinone are all fighting hard so far. At the score, uh, top scorers, you have Lotaro Martinez, five goals, Dusan Vlahovic, four, Olivier Giroud, four, and you have uh, Colpani, three, or those. Simen, two has actually banged in three goals. Just have to list those ones there, but really it's getting more interesting in Italy. Yeah, uh, I think Syria are also they are trying to to give us a, a competitive game like we are, we are having in Premier League. It is only the German league or the La Liga that is two or three man team. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Italy. Premier Premier League, you can't you can't take anybody out. Okay, a, a team that is uh, battling with relegation can come and defeat Manchester City or Liverpool. Mm. The same thing we are seeing uh, in Syria. Ha. If you look at last season, the competition was very, very, very stiff before what happened to Juventus happens to Juventus. But you can see they pick up from where they stopped last season now. And like I said earlier, in each of the league, you see a surprising team coming up to destabilize that table. That's what we have also now. You can see Leeds now coming from nowhere and they're occupying the fourth position. And look at where Roma is currently now, 12th position. So that shows that the league is about to take shape, but take it or leave it, it will still be a tough one between Inter, AC, Juventus and Napoli. A big one there. Just giving you updates concerning the week uh, of those matches that have been played in Italia, are Premier League and also La Liga. They are a good one. Right, let's go to the big one for tonight. <coughs> We have a Champions League is back and the big boys uh, really need to show their skills there. We have matches that we'll be looking at. On this show, let's look at Group E and F. We'll start with Group E, Feyenoord and Celtic. You do have, uh, they have uh, four teams there, Lazio, Atletico Madrid. Let's start with Feyenoord, Celtic. When you want to look at it on paper, as they say, analysts are always on paper. They are never made sure. <laughs> looking at this. Okay, um, if you look at this, they are champion of their respective league and like you said if you're not a champion you can't play in yes, the champions yeah. league take it or leave it and this is the highest in competition in europe for all the clubs every player wants to play in there so if your team your club find yourself to be here you deserve to be there so based on that you cannot write anybody out celtic you can't write them out we know they play fantastic football a compact football mm. They also, fair not also, they are regular customer when it comes to Champions, Champions League. League. Because in their league, it's like they are one of those that are dominating their league. So it's going to be an interesting match to watch tonight. And you can look at it that, okay, because Celtic, uh, Celtic, they are playing away from home and they cannot win. Fair not, they are playing at home. They don't like home and away in football again this time around. Take it or leave it. It's what you can really, really, really offer. So it's going to be a very interesting match to watch. And let me say, it's going to be 50-50. A big one in this group, E, is Lazio versus Atletico Madrid in Rome. Well, a big one at the Stadio Olimpico there because Atletico Madrid will be coming with the mindset that we've already been so close to this Champions League. We want to go again. Well, uh, <laughs> this match tonight, uh, you see Lazio getting the, the uh, pound of flesh against Atletico Madrid. Okay, um, I think I will see it more as in uh, Italy versus Spain <laughs> this time around, you know. Both teams, one is coming from Serie A, the other one is coming from La Liga. So let's see how it pan out. But what would surely happen is um, Atletico Madrid, they've been very close to it, but they should not be obsessed with it. Mm. They should play their game the way they used to play their game. And last year also, they are now a force to reckon with in Serie A and also that's what made them to qualify to play in the Champions League. I see last year having an opponent against Atletico Madrid. Wow, okay, we wait to see. Maybe I remember you predicted Manchester United, Brighton, that Brighton would defeat them. And really, when I saw the result, I was like, what happened? Was it that you made a call to the players of <laughs> Brighton okay. to have extra? Yeah, and the, the truth is Manchester United currently, they don't have a team and they don't have a coach. That's the truth. They don't have a coach. The earlier they realize that, the better. I said it here that it is practically impossible for um, Manchester United to beat Brighton. It is practically impossible for them to do that. And the coach proved me right. When I saw the selection, I was like, what are you doing? When I saw the formation, when I saw the substitute also, no tactics, nothing. So I think they really have to do something about the Manchester United team and their coach. If not, 
they and Chelsea, the way they are starting 14, maybe that's where they will finish 15, 16 at the end of the season. <laughs> We've been talking concerning UEFA Champions League tonight. Match is on there. Let's go to Group F, a big one in Group F, where we have the likes of AC Milan facing Newcastle United. The one they call the Mark Price, they will be playing away at the San Siro Giuseppe Misa. Big one tonight. Can AC Milan actually show their class against Newcastle with experience, or Newcastle will come with their energetic performance against AC Milan? Let's look at that for before we go. P PSG Borussia Dortmund. Honestly, I don't know what happened that um, Newcastle they have be, they, are, they have to be so so unlucky to be in this group with AC Milan with Not PSG with AC Milan PSG and Borussia Dortmund. So it's going to be very very difficult for them to do. But if I'm their coach, I'll have to plan to strategy. If I can try my luck the way they did in 2003, 2004 season, that they are in the same group with the likes of Juventus, and they are able to qualify mm. to play in the second round. So you should apply that. So you can apply that. And we have a fallback option. Now, okay, if I cannot make the top two to qualify for the round of uh, 16, let me try and take the third position so that I can go to Europe mm. and continue playing in Europe. And how can you do this? For, um, for each group stages, you play how many matches? Five matches. Home and away, home and away, home and away. All your own matches. Try as much as possible, whatever it takes, to win it. At least try and get two win from home and get two draw. Worst case scenario, away from home. Playing with AC Milan, who have won the Champions League seven good times, who got to the semi final last season, who have been coming in and out of the Champions League, who have the experience, and with the uh, young squad that they have currently now, the average, average age of AC Milan players is 25 years old. So they are very pacey, they are very energetic, and they have the experience and they have the confidence that we used to be the champion before. So that means they have that ahead of Newcastle. And if you look at the way Newcastle started their season this time around, five matches they won only two. That's how they started last season. They have one of the best defensive records last season in the Premier League. So they have to rediscover themselves. And they've spent a lot of money. They brought in more players to expand their squad. So we need to see that playing out tonight. It will be very interesting one to, to watch, but it will be very difficult. I think the best Newcastle can get tonight is to get a draw from AC Milan because playing at, at zero, it's, it's not something that you can, you can take it's away. Not a it's play. not a chance play. Then going to the second one, mm. PSG and Borussia Dortmund. As far as I'm concerned, take Mbappe away from PSG, there's no PSG again. Wow. <clears throat> take Mbappe away from PSG, there's no PSG again. We saw what happened to them over the weekend. They lost a hope. Despite that uh, Mbappe scored brace, he scored two goals. Mm. So the, dy the dynasty of PSG is collapsing. Look at all the players that they've signed, that they've bought to the team. They are not, they are not there again. What they need to do is to go back to what Barcelona used to do in those days. Build your academy. Don't be going for the likes of Di Maria, Falcao, Neymar, Messi, Big Star. All these Big Star <clears throat> will only stay with you for a year or for two years. Mm. And after that, they will move. I you spend a lot of money to get all these players. But if you have something like what even Real Madrid they are doing right now, you build a future. Look at what Asta is doing. Look at what Brighton, what they are doing also. You take a clip from what all these teams are doing to build a team for the future. Two, three, four years. Then you see, but if you want to continue, let me hijack this uh, star. Let me take this star. Take it or leave it. It's not going to take you to anywhere. And British Dortmund also, don't forget, they have one of the best academy in the world. If not the best. We have numbers of star that came out from their academy from their team in fact they are used uh, they used to call them uh, a selling a selling club selling club yes so they have they have that one so i think it will be difficult for psg to run over Borussia dortmund tonight and if psg is not careful probably they will be the hard one out from that from that that, from that team that from, from that group F, wow. they, they may be the hard one out if case not taken because the likes of AC Milan, the likes of uh, Newcastle, mm. and the likes of Borussia Dortmund, they have good players that are unknown that they are hungry for success more than the PSG, PSG that is known. Mm. No, no, it's PSG you draw about name. Take Messi out of it. I mean, sorry, take Mbappe out of. PSG. PSG. I think PSG is just like a neighbor of Aba here in Nigeria. Seriously, yeah, I hope seriously. PSG's fan won't come for you for this particular one. Hey, well, anyway, just been giving you 
They match itself since the fourth night. UEFA Champions League. PSG facing Dorosha Dortmund. And you have uh, Newcastle away to AC Milan in Italy. Last day will be at home. A big wall there. Matches are on. We have a champions. They will give you more in our subsequent edition. But right now, two story in one. Let's talk about Bellingham. Bellingham right now has won the player of the month for Real Madrid. Uh, is Real Madrid's player of the month for August. Congrats to him. The young man has really done well for himself. Five goals right now. Banging in goals. And moving away from Borussia Dortmund. And he's really doing so well with the, uh, they call them the wise there. Real Madrid. Hala Madrid. The Madridistas are celebrating. You can't take anything away from them. And this one says, Bang Bayern, Bayern Munich to return for Indidi in January. We friend this Nigerian player who plays trade with Leicester City, but right now it seems uh, uh, Bayern are really very interested in the Nigerian player. Okay, um, a very good one. Uh, to start with the first story, that's Jude Bellingham. I think um, mm. is the first English player to win the award. Mm. The first English player, and if you play three matches and you score four goals and you made one assist. Nothing is left for you than to win the player of the month. And it's also the third player in the history of Real Madrid to score three consecutive goals in three matches after Wesley Snyder and Cristiano Ronaldo. So that's a plus for him and a very good thing for him. Seeing an English player performing exceptional outside the Premier League. So that means the hype is not there. So that means he deserves to get it. Therefore, indeed, he should think twice before going there. Is he going to get the regular playing time? He's or having Leicester. He's having in Leicester. If a, um, if a club in Premier League is coming for him now, I would say, oh, he has been there for about four or five years. You understand the pattern, the play, the style. It's okay for him. But going to Bayern Munich, you should remember what happened to Sadio Mane mm. that left from Premier League to um, Bundesliga. And now he finds himself in Saudi Arabia. Indeed, he's still 26 years old, so he still has age on his side. Well, that's a big one. They are giving advice to a friend in the day to watch out before moving to Bayern Munich. That will be it on the show on 360 Sports. Ola Peters, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Adeline. It's my pleasure being here. And a here. good marriage for my United and Chelsea. <laughs> Very good marriage. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go now. I'm Adeline Ajisha. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.